Mike Singer. Hey, Michael. Um, what did you see on that late offensive foul when Faku ran into Anthony Davis? And did you give any consideration uh, to potentially challenging that call? Oh, yeah, d definitely considered it. But uh, talked to our coaches behind the bench, um, and they said, you know, what the official said. That, you know, Faku kind of took him out. I haven't even seen the replay yet, Mike, I'll be honest. Um, so, yes, was definitely considering challenging it. Uh, but that's where I trust my coaches who are watching the replay right behind the bench uh, to kind of give me the thumbs up or thumbs down. And they felt uh, from their perspective and watching it that uh, it wouldn't have been overturned. So a uh, big play, you know, to come down, get a stop and uh, hit a big shot that's taken off the board. So. Uh, those are the breaks. Brandon Cristal. Coach, do you uh, spend a lot of time dwelling on the missed threes compared to the, I guess, them doubling you up there? Or do you focus more on the on the comeback when you guys obviously could have just shut it down? Not that that's your attitude, but, you know, could have just said this isn't our night and moved on. Yeah, no, I, I, I was happy to see us kind of uh, start playing with some urgency, to your point, Brandon. Uh, to give ourselves a chance. We got down by as many as 14. Um, and I think we went on an 8-0 run, got six stops in a row. Um, but I just didn't understand why it took so long. I thought we played hard tonight, but just it was an uncharacteristic game. You know, we were only made six threes. Uh, I thought we had some pretty good looks. Obviously, to your point, they made 13. I thought Mark Gasol tonight was a difference maker. Um, and, and he went out there and played Nicola well, but he also spaced the floor and he knocked down three threes by himself. Um, but just, I don't know, maybe being in LA for three, four days was too much for us, but I uh, just didn't like how we played for most of the night. And then it was great to, to see us try to give ourselves a chance late, but uh, too little too late, as they say. Joel Rush. Hey, Coach, uh, how is PJ doing, and have you gotten an update on his condition? Uh, I haven't gotten an update. You know, I talked to him back in the training room right after the game. Uh, he's in decent spirits. Uh, I don't know if this team is cursed. You know, we got to bring in some kind of uh, high priest to, to rid the team of any bad omens. But uh, I could see right away he was grabbing his, I think, his groin. Um, so we'll wait and see what they say. Our team docs will get their hands, look, look, look to see what's going on and figure out how long he may be out. Obviously, Jamal, Monte, Will, now PJ, you know, uh, next man up. And uh, I think we have seven games left uh, and we're going home to play a really talented New York Knicks team that's playing at a high level. So uh, that'll be a great challenge for us. Matt Moore. Michael, their physicality is the way that they try and play. Michael wound up with a, with a good amount of shots, made some plays late, had another opportunity for one on the Composo play, but did seem to kind of get disengaged a little bit by the physicality and how they played him. Is that something that he's going to have to work through? Did you see that the same way? Um, and what was the team's overall approach to the Lakers' physicality tonight? Yeah, well, I mean, they have the number one defense in the NBA. I mean, so you know you're going to have to work for everything. Uh, to your point, Matt, a very physical team, very aggressive team. And the amazing thing is even with LeBron out, they maintained that number one defensive rating. Uh, so it's not just him, obviously. They have a lot of size, length. And with all the injuries that we have, I mean, Michael, they keyed in on Michael before. But right now, obviously, you know, we're, we're led by two efficient scorers, Nicola and Michael Porter, and they're game planning for him. They're, they're throwing different bodies at him, being very physical, um, and it's great because experience is the greatest teacher that we all have, and he's going to figure out ways to get open. We can help him, and he has to help himself, obviously. Um, you know, but he went out there, still at 19 and 6, and uh, you know, we're going to need Michael to, these last seven into the postseason, uh, play at a high level for us because it seems like we have somebody dropping every other game. Dwayne Rankin. Thank you, Coach. Coach, just wanted just to ask. This is a little off topic, but uh, when you look at the, the playoffs coming up, and you know, being at one or two seed, just you guys still have to have a shot to get one of those. 
you'd have less time to prepare for who you're going to play because you don't know who you're going to play until the play-in tournament is over. Uh, talk with a couple other coaches about that. Some say it's at a disadvantage. Some say, well, hey, it is what it is. I guess your thoughts on that possibility and not having as much time to prepare for your first-round opponent because of the play-in tournament, if you're a one or two seed. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't really even thought about that, Dwayne. It, it is an interesting question, and uh, I guess, you know, uh, a predicament for those teams that are in that position. Um, you know, you always like to know who you're playing, uh, especially this year. I think, you know, the, the first four days while the play-in tournament is taking place, if you know your first-round opponent, you know, you're, you're getting all your prep done, your walkthroughs, your film sessions, and you know come game one, you have all that time to prepare for. So that is definitely an advantage. Uh, if you don't know until Friday and you're playing on Saturday or Sunday, that's less of an advantage. But the reality is this, man. I remember you know, five years when I was in Cleveland and I was doing a lot of the playoff prep for Mike Brown. A lot of times you didn't know who you were playing in the opening round to the last night of the season. So uh, that's not, nothing new in terms of that. And uh, if you're a number one seed, shit, you shouldn't be worried about that anyways. <laughs> All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Esteban Abed. Hi, Coach. Um, about Aaron Gordon, uh, in the last game, he improved his defense for the team. What can you tell me about that? Well, yeah, Aaron is a really important player for us. And you know, every night, uh, Aaron is being tasked with the responsibility of guarding a great player. So it was Kawhi Leonard uh, two days ago. Tonight it was Anthony Davis. Uh, and those are really tough covers. And the reality is this, Esteban, uh, Aaron or any other player in the NBA cannot guard those guys one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you need five guys working as one to make it hard on those players. You know, tonight was uh, probably a really uh, ugly game for a national TV audience. 89, 93, this was like 1988 NBA basketball. So it wasn't the most uh, appealing game, but uh, I think both teams played hard. Obviously, they've been in a funk. They had lost three in a row. They have a lot of injuries, no Schroeder, no LeBron, and uh, they pulled it out. So uh, we just have to find a way to go home, try to get healthy, and, uh, and get back to our winning ways against a quality opponent on Wednesday night. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thank you.